Hi everyone! Um, just filming this introduction obviously after I film the video because I am wearing my Freya dress. Um, there will be a proper clip and photos and things inserted at the end of the video so that you can see it all properly. I just thought I'd do an introduction. Um, I am making the Freya dress in this video from the new Tilly and the Buttons book stretch. Um, the fabric is from the Fabric Fox which will be linked below and the book will also be linked below and there are a couple of other things that I mention in the video like my sewing machine needle guide printable that will be linked below um, the guide to sewing stretch fabrics that will be linked below, below. basically everything that I say is going to be linked below um, as well as my typed review on my blog of the Freya dress I have tried to do the um, method of inserting the ruffle as part of the shoulder seam and um, there were a few hiccups which you'll see in the video um, which meant that I ended up not my method wasn't super successful but I do know how it will work now that I've tried it um, and I go into detail on how you can use the um, shoulder seam insert method um, in the video because the problem that I had was that my ruffle was too wide so it got in the way of the um, sleeve but basically if you move the ruffle in more towards your neck or um, do it in a different way which I talk about again in the video um, then those ways work or they should work anyway um, yeah so I hope you enjoy the video um, it took me a really long time to record and edit so I really apologise if um, there's anything that I've kind of missed but um, my review will be really comprehensive um, my typed review on my blog will be really comprehensive and um, I'll say anything that I've forgotten to say in that just because it's taken a really long time to put everything together so um, yeah um, I'm about to record my voiceover I really hope you enjoy the video um, if you have any tips or if I've missed something glaringly obvious about how to do the sleeve insertion uh, not sleeve insertion ruffle insertion into the sleeve and um, please do let me know I probably have missed something glaringly obvious because I got a bit of a cold so well I say cold yeah it's just all been a bit confusing uh, sorry about the glare on my glasses I should have taken them off there is also some bonus cat content in there um, to make up for the mistakes that I made also I'll just say now before I forget at the end um, I did all my pleats the same way um, and I found that the ones, when they're pointing up towards the shoulder, they seem to hang better. You can see here, they hang better than the ones that are pointing down. So um, there is a suggestion of doing it as like a box pleat, but obviously I didn't do it that way. But anyway, get, let, get on with the video, Harriet. Stop talking, just get on with it. See you in a second. Bye. Oh, also, in a lot of the clips, I am wearing the Megan Nielsen Rowan top in fabric from Semi Sunshine, also linked below. Bye! Okay, welcome to my sew along. Um, I'm making the Freya dress version, not sweater version, from the new Tilly in the Buttons book, Stretch. I've also added the pleated ruffle, um, which I go through how to make in this video. Uh, so that's the version I'm making, basically the same. You're going to need a machine needle that is suitable for the fabric that you're using. I've used a ballpoint needle but I've put a link in the description to a printable guide that I've written. It's three pages on choosing your sewing machine needles. So if you're not sure, that should help. Um, so the first thing that I'm doing, I'm doing the ruffle first rather than at the point that Tilly suggests in her book. So I'm marking about where I think I want the lowest point of the ruffle to be. Before I unpin everything, I'm marking the centre of the bodice, the front bodice. Um, just so that I know that everything is going to be symmetrical. Um, I'm making the markings on the right side of the fabric um, so that it will just be easier to see rather than on the wrong side. It wouldn't really make sense. So it's important to make sure that you're using something that will wash off afterwards. So you make that centre marking and unfold the bodice, well, or front bodice of the dress, whatever you want to call it, um, and make that marking. Uh, make sure everything is flat before you start because then that wouldn't work, otherwise that wouldn't work. And then using a ribbon, I'm marking out and pinning where I want my ruffle to be. So I've just sped this bit up for you. 
but um, you'll be able to see that I'm kind of marking it all on um, to make sure that I'm happy with all the placements and everything and double on, uh, not really much else to say here um, yeah that's where I'm putting it, I'm doing a curved one but you can also make it into a point or a square, I think you can kind of make it into whatever shape you fancy to be honest with you I am using again a there, I'm using a pencil that I know is going to wash off of the fabric to mark along the inside of where I've placed that ribbon so that just when I'm attaching my ruffle I've planned out already where I want it to be just so that I know it's all going to look right and be symmetrical rather than trying to do it more by eye I've kind of made sure it's all right and then I'm unpinning that ribbon as you can see and measuring the length of it from where I pinned it on and then using the calculation in the book to figure out how long my bit of fabric will need to be to create the pleats which Tilly goes through in her instruction. I've cut out that strip of fabric, I created a paper pattern piece just so that I can use it again in the future and gone to press it. Um, th in this clip I'm making the pleats um, it's kind of hard to see but basically what I'm doing is measuring five centimeters from the last pleat um, and pinching the fabric at that point where it's five centimeters bringing it in right sides together and then using two pins to secure that pleat to make sure that um, nothing's going to move and it stays all all the same um, I've just kind of I've filmed myself doing most of it and sped that all up so that's what you're about to see but um, yeah I just kind of did that the whole way along this is definitely the most time consuming part of the dress or sweater whichever version you're making um, so if you're not doing the ruffle it is going to be a really quick make but um, you don't have to be exact with the size of the pleats you can kind of just eyeball it because when the dress is finished or when the sweater is finished they all kind of look the same and they all drape so um, yeah it is important to press your piece first um, but then I found after I made sure I did the, the calculation correctly that my piece of fabric wasn't really long enough so what I did was added um, another 30 centimeters and finished it all up and then pinned it um, along my guideline that I drew on which I found really helpful um, and yeah and then I made sure I was happy with everything and stitch it on with a zigzag I did it differently to the size um, of zigzag that Tilly suggests in the book um, my one was kind of a wider stitch length, but the zigzags were really close together. Um, I'm not sure which one's width and which one's length. But mine kind of ended up a longer zigzag, but really close together. Just because I thought that way it would be the most secure. And I went really slowly. Um, obviously this is sped up. And I did it so that, as you can see in the clip, the pleats are pointing away from the presser foot so that there's no chance of the presser foot kind of undoing those pleats as it sews if that makes sense um, and then I did some hand stitching and after I did that I gave it all a bit of a press after this clip I hadn't pressed it at this point um, I laid it out to make sure that it was as I wanted it and I kind of held it up against myself so that I could see where the ruffle was going to be and that I was happy with that uh, there's that it yeah it needed a press there <laughs> um, and then next I stabilised the shoulders of the back bodice as Tilly says in her instructions I used a satin ribbon um, which ended up actually matching my fabric perfectly so yeah pretty pleased with that one um, Tilly goes into de detailed instructions of how to do that so I, I'm not going to do that because this clip is not long enough for me to explain properly but basically this stops the shoulder seams from stretching out and you only need to do it on the back bodice shoulder seams um, this bit, after this bit, with my method, is where it starts to get fiddly. So I thought I'd insert a video of Otto, my cat, um, before I explained properly what happened. There he is, having a great time. Now, cut to future me. Hi! Okay, so it's future me, back to tell you what went wrong with the ruffles. Um, I sort of vaguely explained it in my introduction to the video. <clears throat> I hope the voiceover's going okay, by the way it's really hard to match up the videos to the talking so some bits are really short and I need longer time but anyway I hope it's going okay and that you're getting the gist of what I'm doing in the video 
Um, anyway, I found, sorry I've got my notes here so I'm going to be looking down at them. I thought the attachment of the ruffle into the shoulder seam, like I said, would be easier than I found it. But I figured out two ways, um, I mean if you can think of a way to do it so that the ruffle is this long and overlaps the armhole, which is where my problem came in, is that it's going over the point of the armhole. Um, if you can find a way to do it like this with an attachment into the shoulder seam, please comment it below um, and I'll make sure that everyone knows um, that you are the one that gets the credit for all of that but basically um, a more simple way to put it into the shoulder seam goodness how many times do I need to say shoulder seam without it getting fiddly like my one did is either, I'll move my hair out of the way, move the either make the width smaller, my one is 8 centimeters, but you can make it smaller and move it more in towards the neck so that this part, the edge of the pleats doesn't overlap the armhole, which is where the problem comes in. You want to make sure that it doesn't go over this bit. <laughs> um, so you can either do it that way, or I'll insert a picture here. This is Rosa's one, Rosabella from Sewn. She did hers, hang on let me get the picture up so that I can see it properly. Okay, so you can see from the picture, I found it now, you can see from the picture that hers is gathered rather than pleated, but she's made it so that there's a lot of volume um, there at the shoulder you can see it right in the corner so that you can actually really clearly see the armhole where the sleeve goes in. That way you'll be able to ping it out of the way when you're sewing it but like I said this ended up getting in the way and it would have been like caught into the sleeve so that it would fold up like this and just look generally really bad. So for that reason I've taken out the clips of me joining the front and back bodices at the shoulder seams. That's pretty self-explanatory, I'm sure you'll be able to figure that one out on your own, especially with Tilly's amazing, amazing instructions. And also the insertion of the sleeves on the flat, um, just because that's where I ran into trouble a bit. I did work it out so that it ended up fine, I mean my shoulders look fine I think, nothing wrong with them there. Um, but yes, I'll say it clearly in the video when you're meant to be doing that. Okay. This bit now is when you're meant to be joining the front and back bodice. So that's what I've just done and the next clip is um, me stitching the neckband. After you've stitched the front and back bodice together it's time to stitch the neckband. So you need to stitch the shortest lengths together like you can see in this clip and then fold it lengthways in half, pin it and press the, that bit flat so that you've got a nice point at the top. Um, I, it doesn't say to pin in the instructions, but I always do. And then, change of scene again. That was surprising for you, wasn't it? My camera packed up, so we're here. Um, after you've done the neckband, you've attached it to the bodice, did the seam allowance and pressed the seam allowances down towards the rest of the bodice. It's time to do the sleeves, which you do on the flat in the instructions and that's so much easier and I much prefer it to making the sleeve into a tube and then easing it or whatever into the armhole. There's no easing with this, just kind of a bit of wangling, that's probably 100% the wrong word but we'll go with wangle. Um, and then stitch that and the next clip which is very satisfying and is very fun to do is sewing all of the sleeve and all of the side seams so suddenly you have a dress. Then, here's me prancing about in my dress. As you can tell, I was very uncomfortable filming this because I was just standing in front of a camera. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Alterations that I made was were cutting the sleeves five centimeters shorter and shortening the hem of the dress by 10 centimeters because I am abundantly short and um, the length that I cut it to only just comes above my knee. I'm really happy with everything. Um, I know what I'm going to be changing next time, and I hope that the video has been marginally helpful, even though I did bits wrong. But hopefully I explained the right way to do bits, um, after I realised what went wrong. Uh, yeah, that's that. I'm going to not make a video next week because I've got a lot going on, so I'm going to be too wiped out to film and edit. So I hope you don't mind, but keep updated on the blog, Instagram, other blog, everything's linked below like I've said millions of times in this video. And I'll speak to you the week after next. Bye!